Shalom, everyone. Uh, we are continuing our limud of Sefer Yeshayahu. We are towards the end. We are Perik Uh If you remember, uh, Perik Samach Dalit uh, and Samach Gimel as well, were the very heartfelt prayer of a Navi, the great Navi Yeshayahu, who sees in his Navua Chorban and Golos and persecution and suffering. And he prays to Hashem to reveal himself, to bring the Geula, to take Am Yisrael out of the suffering, even in an audacious way. He even blames Hashem. He says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, all of the tzaddikim you took away from us prevented us from being inspired. And all of the hardships of Golas hardened our hearts. And instead of making us better, it made us worse. And he ends, at the end of Samach Dalit, on all that has happened to us, can you still hold yourself back? Can you be silent? And you can afflict us, Inoi, to such a great degree. The prayer of the Navi, and indeed these are the last words of the Navi, because... Samachay and Samachvav are Hashem's response to the prayer of the Navi. And Hashem says back to the Navi, Nidrashti, I made myself available to be sought. Meaning, I made myself available so people could look for me. Lolo Sha'alu, but nobody asked. Nimtsesi, I made myself found, found that I could be found. The low bikshuni. It's reminiscent of, again, a famous Hasidic story. It's a mashal of a child who was playing hide-and-go-seek with his classmates. And the child that was hiding was crying and sobbing. And when he was asked why was he crying, he said, I was hiding, but nobody was looking for me. Hashem says, I was here, and nobody cared. Amarti hineni hineni. I said, I'm here, I'm here. El goy like kaira bishmi. To a nation that did not care to call out to me. Peirasti yodai kolayom alam sorer. I spread out my hands. I begged you to come to me. To this rebellious nation. That is going in the wrong way after whatever their thoughts are. This was a nation that was making me angry over and over again. They slaughter korbanos to Avaidazara. This is the Jewish people. And they bring korbanos on brick. This apparently was one of the idolatrous uh, worships. Hayeshvim bakvarim, and they sit next to graves and communicate with the dead. Ubanitsurim yolinu. Nitsurim are corpses, and they sleep with the corpses. Haichlim besara chazir, they eat a chazir. Umarak pigulim kilehim. And their pots and pans are filled with disgusting soup, meaning the soup of treif, the soup of korbanas of Ayvayda Zara. Ha'aymrim, and they say, kara ve'lecha, in other words, they, they, and they have a self-righteousness and a gaiva that is superimposed over their sins. They look at their fellow Jew and they say, get away from me, al tigashpi, do not touch me, ki kedashticha. For I am holier than you. That's what Targum Yenison says. In other words, people who are Rishayim, but they have the feeling that they're righteous. Uh, they say, I support Israel, whatever it would be. And they look down at other Jews and they say, get away from me. I am holier than thou. Hashem says, Eila, Ashan Biapi. So Kav this is like smoke in my nostrils. Smoke. In other words, I'm smoking up. This is a lotion of anger. Eish yokedetz kol hayom. A fire that burns the whole day. 
Hine Kasuba Lefanai. It's as if there's a book in which all of these Averos are in front of me. Lo echasha, lo echasa, rather, kiim shilamti, vishilamti al chaykam. Yeah, um, I'm sorry, my mind not says echasa, the word should be echasha. I will not be silent until I pay and I punish all of what they deserve and in that way they will be purified and worthy of redemption. So Hashem, remember, Hashem's punishment for Klal Yisrael is not one of hatred and rejection. It's one of purification. The neshama gets damaged by Averos. And therefore there needs to be a spiritual therapy to purify it. I look at your Averos and I look at the accumulation of Averos from your forefathers and all the prior generations. They sacrifice to idols on the mountains and on the hills. They blaspheme me by turning to other gods. Umadosi pu'ulasam rishona el chaykam. And I measure their deeds and I will return it back to them that they will suffer the consequences of their action. But Hashem says, there is still hope. Kai amar Hashem. Kasher yimotze hatiraish b'yeshko. Let's say you have a cluster of grapes. And in that cluster there is some good grape juice that can become wine. Viyamar. And the farmer says, even if most of the eshkel is no good, al tashchiseyu, do not destroy it all. Ki brachabai. Because there is still a blessing in the eshkel. Because of the little bit of juice that is there. Kain aseh leman avadai levilti hashchisako. So too, for the sake of the small remnant of the Jewish people that remains my servants through thick and through thin, I will not destroy Am Yisrael. Vod seisi mi Yaakov zera, and I will take from Yaakov a seed that can be planted and perpetuated. Ume Yehuda, Yeresh Harai. Again, Yehuda was the dominant tribe, so from Yehuda I will take a Yeresh, an heir who will inherit my holy mountain. Vireshua b'chirai v'yavadai yishkinu shama. And those who I've chosen will inherit Eretz Yisrael. And my servants will dwell there. And then when the Geula comes, and even before the Geula, there will be prosperity and fertility and productivity. Chazal say over and over again, based on many psukim throughout Tanakh, that the fertility of Eretz Yisrael is a simon of a Geula that is coming. The Sharon, that is the uh, coastal plain, shall become lush with pasture land so the sheep can dwell there. That's a good thing. The Amek Achar and the valleys that are Makulkal and ruined, Lerevetz Bakar, shall once again be grazing land. Liami, to my nation, Asher Durashuni, that sought a connection with me. But, Biatem, the rest of you, Ozve Hashem Hashechechem es Har those who have left God, who have forgotten my holy mountain, the Beis Hamikdash, Ha'orchem la Gad Shulchan. God is although it's one one of the names of Shifta Yisrael. God is also uh, a name of an Avodah Zarah. So they set up their tables in honor of the Avodah Zarah God. 
and they pour wine libations to Mani, so La Mani is to an Avedi Zara called Mani. So there's a pun. They pour their Nesach to Mani, Umanisi etchem. I have appointed for you Cherev, sort, Vokuchem Latefach Techro. All of you will bow down to the sword, to the slaughter. Yan Karasi Vlayanisem. I called out to you. <coughs> you did not answer. Dibarti Voloshamatem. I spoke and you didn't hear. Vatasu Harabi Ainai, and you did evil in my eyes. Ubi Asher Lochafatsdi Bakhartam, and that which I did not want is what you have chosen. So, once again, as the Rambam said, the details of the pre-Messianic cataclysms, the wars of Gaig and Magaig, are mysteries that we really don't fully understand. Some people like to connect uh, current events or past events to this messianic process. The Rambam warns us we're not going to be able to do that. We're not going to know until it happens, until Mashiach comes, then we can go backwards and figure it out. All I can say is that these psukim uh, portray a picture that is ominous for the Jewish people as well. Sadiqim will be saved, they will be elevated, they will be glorified. And Jews who reject Hashem will be severely punished. And it mentions Kulchem Latevach Tichro. They will bow down to the slaughter. This is not a Pollyannish happy ending. This is ominous. This is scary. This is tragic. And I don't know what it refers to, but I just want to put two ideas out here that when we read verses like this, we need to understand. Point number one is, since these gezeros only apply to those who reject Hashem and do not do tshuva, there is always the possibility of tshuva that can be mavato these paranias. That's the chayra pashat. The second idea might sound a little more difficult, but the chayra, that's what the Rambam says in many places, that any nevua of Chorban and Paranias on the Jewish people can always be changed by Hashem's Rachamim. That's why the Rambam famously says that a Navi cannot be established as a false Navi if he says a bad thing that doesn't happen because Hashem has Rachamim. It's only a good thing that doesn't happen that can make him a Navi Shekhar. So it turns out that every Navu Alara can, can be changed. And that, that l'chay would mean even without tshuva, it's shayach ha-kadosh baruch will be nichem al hara. So I don't know. These psukim obviously scare me and they're things to be concerned about. But let's go further. Again, it, it actually continues this theme. L'chayn, pasuk yagimu, kayamar Hashem aleikim, Hashem aleikim, the Hashem of mercy and din. Hine avada yechelu, my faithful tzaddikim will eat the atem and you. So the pashas of you are the oizvei Hashem of Klal Yisrael. Yish, uh, tiravu, you will be hungry. Hinei avada yishnu, my servants will drink. V'yatem titzma, you will be thirsty. Hinei avada yismachu, my servants will rejoice. V'yatem and you, tevosha, you will be ashamed. Hinei avada yaronu mitov leiv. My servants will sing from the happiness in their hearts. You will cry out with pain in your heart. And from a broken spirit you will cry. Now again, these psukim 
are not necessarily even referring to physical suffering, although the Pashtas is this is a physical suffering, but it to refer to the idea that when the Russia looks back and sees what they could have done with their lives, there's a tremendous pain. Indeed, Svarim say that the pain of Gehenna, the fire of Gehenna, is actually the realization of what we could have done with our lives that we didn't. So there are different ways of understanding this. Your name, again speaking about the Ozve Hashem, your name will be a Shavua to those who I choose. So Rashi explains this is an idiom that when someone wants to curse somebody, they'll say, may God treat you like that person, meaning the Ozve Hashem. You will be the paradigm of one who is destroyed and worthless. V'hemischa Hashem Aleikim and God will kill you. God will destroy you. V'lavadav yikra Hashem Acher and to his avadim, to the faithful one, they will have a different name. It's as if you're not even the same family anymore. Asher ha-misbarech b'aretz yisbarech v'lokei amen and he who will be blessed in Eretz Yisrael will be blessed by the God of Amen. Very unusual phrase. The God of Amen. So there are Midrashim that talk about the Sechus of answering Amen. But the Pashta says Amen is really a shorthand word for Emuna, meaning the God of truth. Amen is a word of Emes. Hanishba Biaretz and those who swear will no longer swear in the name of Avedah Zarah but they will swear in the name of Hashem. By the contrary to what people think, that it's forbidden to swear, the Rambam actually says that if you're nishba emes, b'shem HaKadosh Baruch it's a mitzvah saseh, although our minig is not to do that, because who knows if you're always telling the whole truth. Ki nishkechu atzara sarishaynes. That for the ones who are faithful to Hashem, all of those centuries of tzaras will be forgotten. And God says as well, from my eyes, I will not think of your Averus and your mistakes because you, the faithful ones, have come back to me. I am creating a new heaven and a new earth. A new world. All of the sins of the old world will no longer be remembered. And it will not be on my heart at all. So again, this idea of new heaven, new earth. Uh, Christianity uses that as some type of remez that the Tyre is going to be superseded. The mitzvahs will no longer be binding. There'll be yashka that'll make a new Torah. Chas v'shalom. And they take this in a very literal way that there will be a new world without the Torah anymore. But again, uh, the, the Pashtun says that's not the idea. The simple idea is this is simply a metaphor. It doesn't mean necessarily there'll be a new creation of heaven and earth. In fact, the Rambam says, Beferis, that's not going to be the case. But rather it means that it'll be ki'ilu, it's a new world, because Hashem is no longer going to remember. I mean, imagine if you had a marriage, and chas v'shalom, one of the part- partners was unfaithful in the marriage. Even if they reconcile, the person still remembers the betrayal and can't really get it out of their heart and their mind. What the Pasuk is being made it is that for those who are faithful to Hashem and those who do tshuva, it'll be a new world. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Kaviyacho, whatever that means, won't even remember those Averas. 
and it will not affect the relationship. So that's the metaphorical meaning of Shamayim Chadoshim, the Oretz Chadosha, but it certainly does not mean that the mitzvahs are going to be going to be bottom. Pasagitches kiim sisu vegilu adeyad. You will rejoice forever and ever, Asher Nibore, in this new world that I create. Ki hinini bore es Yerushalayim gila. I am recreating Jerusalem as the city of joy. The Amma and her nation, again, Yerushalayim as a woman, Masos, will be with Simcha. The Galti. Yerushalayim. And then Hashem says, and I will have Gila in Yerushalayim. Vesasti biami, and I will have Simcha in my people. Velo yishama ba'od kol b'chi v'kol zaka. There will never again be the voices of crying or the voices of shouting, piguim, whatever. Lo yia misham od ul yamim. There will no longer be youngsters who die young. Vizakein asher lo yamale at yamav, or even an elderly person who did not live the normal life expectancy. Ki hanar ben mea shana yamos. If a person dies at a hundred, that will be called the death of a young man. Vachaitan, even if someone sins, Ben Meyashaniako, his curse would be he'll die at a hundred. So again, it's a little odd odd here, a few things here. First of all, you see Beferish from this Pasak. And the Rambam indeed states this that people will still die when Mashiach comes, at least until Tichiyasa Mesa. Mashiach will die. There will be a hereditary succession of son of Mashiach. The only thing is, the bracha will be arichos yomim, that uh, dying at a hundred will be treated as a young death, and people will live longer than that, uh, as it were. But there will still be death, and this is a bit of a raya to the Rambam, that essentially the teva will still consider to be shaylet. The second thing that's a little curious, though, is the statement that the chayte will be cursed by dying at a hundred, now that implies that when Mashiach comes, there could still be sin and there would still be a Yetzer Hara. This itself is a very interesting topic. Uh, there are Makairis and Chazal that say the Yetzer Hara will be destroyed. Others will say there'll still be a Yetzer Hara, but it'll be on a, so to speak, a higher Madrega. But I see that because of this Kasha, the Mitsudas. Uh, David has a, an unusual translation for chayte, that chayte does not mean sinner, and he probably said this because he didn't want to assume that people will sin, limos Mashiach, but chayte simply means lacking, someone that is lacking, meaning the person who dies, ben mea, will be lacking a normal arichas yamim, but that's the bracha that even a person who is lacking arichas yamim will live until a hundred. Pasakrafalaf Uvo Ba Ubanu Batamiashavu. They will build homes and live in those homes. Vinatu Kharamim they will plant vineyards. Vyachlu Piryam and they will eat their fruit. Lo Yivnu the Acher Yeshev. They will not build and have somebody else take it over. Golos. Lo yitu v'acher yochel. They will not plant and have someone else take it away. Ki ki mei ha'etz yemei ami. My people's connection to Eretz Yisrael will be like the tree. Uh, again, part of it is trees uh, can live for literally hundreds and hundreds of years. They're strong, they're powerful. They are permanent. It's very difficult to uproot them. Eric the Yid in Eretz Yisrael will be like the tree. But spiritually, this also refers to growing, producing, not just being static. Spiritual growth. 
Umaisei yadeim yevalu b'chirai. My b'chirai, my those that I choose, will wear away what they do. Meaning, say normally when a person makes a table, the table will live longer than them. So one of the ways the Torah expresses arichus yamim is, you will be mevale maisei yadayim. You will wear out what you made, meaning you will outlast what you made, instead of saying, maisei yadayim mevalin oso. Lo yigu larik. No longer will they toil for emptiness. For lo yeldu lebehala, and no longer will they give birth to children for confusion. If you recall in Uvalutzion every day we say, Laman lo nigalarik. We pray that we shouldn't work for Rik, for lo nele de bahala, and that's taken from Hashem's promise, lo yigu la Rik, for lo yeldu lebehala. The simple meaning is that you will, whatever you do, your work will always be for a benefit and you will not lose your children either physically or spiritually and therefore the birth of your children will only be a bracha. As I said before in some other program, part of this also means that all of your work will be devoted to Avedas Hashem and not to the empty pursuits of Ayla Mazam, because we read in earlier Prakim that the non Jews are going to do a lot of the physical work. So your work will not be for emptiness. The birth of your children will not be for Behala, for confusion, or darkness, or death. Kizera. Baruch Hashem Hema. They are the children of those who are blessed by God. V'tzet so'eyem itam, and that will include their succeeding generations. V'hoya terem yikro v'ani ene. I will answer your prayers before you even ask. If you recall, so many things in Yeshayo find their way in the Siddur. This is part of the tefillah of Anenu that we recite on a fast day. Terem yikru vani ene od heim midabrim while you're still talking. You don't even have to finish. Vani yeshma. I am listening. Kabbalah sa tefillah. Zevitoleh Yiru Kiachad, the wolf and the lamb will be grazing in the pasture together. Aryei Kabakar, Yechal Tevin, the lion will be eating straw like the cattle. So here we have a big, big machlokas, the Rambam, the Ravid, other Rishainim. Remember, I mentioned just a few moments ago that the Shita Sarambam is that Yemosa Mashiach are not going to be miraculous. There'll be blessings, there'll be peace, there'll be Arichas Yamim, but people will still die. And the Minhagai Shalaylam is not going to be changed. The Minhagai Shalaylam is going to be the Teva is going to be. And that which the Pasuk says, the wolf and the lamb will graze together. And the Aryeh will eat Tevin like the Bakar? That is a mushal. It is not literal. Wolves are still going to kill sheep. And lions are still going to kill cattle. But it's a mushal for the Umo Sa'ilam, the aggressive, militaristic nations of the world that are called wild animals. They will make peace with Am Yisrael. That is called the sheep. So according to the Rambam, it's a mashal, but the actual wolf and the actual lion are still going to do what they do. That's the teva of the world. The raivet, on the other hand, 
even though the Chaira, I don't think he can deny that there'll be death, because that was Beferish, a person will die at a hundred, etc. But the Raiva does say that these Psukim are Kipshutai Kamashmai, that even the wild animals that are carnivorous, they eat other animals, their Teva will be Nishtana Letaif. So that's a big Machlekes. So it says, the Ze'ev and the sheep will graze together. The arye, like the cattle, will eat straw. So that is a nace, either like the Rambam, world's peace, like the Raivid, Pshutai Kamashmai. But then there's a third thing that Lechair is a little bit of a problem. The Nachash Afar Lachmo. The Nachash will eat the dust. Now the problem is that doesn't seem to change anything because the Torah itself goes all the way back and says the Nachash will be cursed. That was the curse of the Nachash. The famous vort of the Chidusha Yarim, by the way, that the idea is that Hashem doesn't want to hear the Nachash's davening, so he makes his Mazayna so matsui that he never has to daven. But what's the Chidush of this? So there are really two pshatim. One pshat is that everything will change for the good with respect to other animals, but the nachash has no tikkun. It'll be exactly as it was. This is learning like the Ravid that the other animals will change. So nachash afori lachmo, lachmo is not saying there'll be a shinoi, but punfakert. For the nachash, there is no shinoi. Others learn a little differently. The Nachash may already be eating dust, but the Nachash also likes to bite and poison. So Nachash Afar Lachmai means the only thing the Nachash will do is the Afar. The Nachash will no longer hurt. Again, according to the Ravid, that is literal. According to the Rambam, you're going to have to learn that Nachash is also a type of hostile nation that likes to attack, maybe terrorists, and they will be happy to be in the dirt and not attack. Lo yareyu, they will not do evil. For lo yashchisu, they will not destroy b'chol har in all of my holy mountain. Amar Hashem. Again, if you remember, this pasuk is recited at the end of Tashlich on Rosh Hashanah.